I've been waiting for this moment all week. I've been waiting for this time all week. I could barely sleep last night. I tossed and turned in my bed because I knew I had a chance to talk to some young minds. I bet you're thinking, who is this guy? <laughs> this, is, this is the time for him to speak. I've been seeing him all afternoon. I couldn't wait. I had to go see who I was going to speak to. I mean, I've been so excited because I know that your minds are young and impressionable and you, you, you have such a desire to learn. And I have some jewels I want to drop on you tonight. I have some things I want to share that I hope that will stick. Some things I want to say that I hope you take away. I didn't come here to play. <laughs> I didn't come here to make you feel good. I came here to make you think. I came here to make you ponder, contemplate. I know you've been in an environment all day where you've been trying to learn some things. You've been exposed to so much. That's the blessing of being here on this campus, is that you're being exposed. You've been given an opportunity to see something you've never seen before. See people you've never seen before. Speak to people you've never spoken to before, maybe ever again. How many of you have heard me before? A few hands. I've spoken in Mobile. In December, I spoke in Jackson. But this is a new day and a new opportunity, and that's why I couldn't sleep last night. And I'm not making that up. I woke up around 3 a.m. thinking about this moment. I couldn't wait for you to come. I was standing at the door. I had to shake every hand that entered the room. Did you not see me? I couldn't wait to see you. I looked every one of you in the eye. Did you notice that? I shook every hand. And I looked you in the eye and I said, hello, hi, how are you? And I got some firm handshakes. I got some fishy handshakes. <laughs> I caught some people's eye. I didn't catch others. That's okay. You understand that that's important. And when you shake someone's hand, you go web to web, you look them in the eye. And I remember your handshake. It was a good handshake. You looked me in the eye. Several other, others of you looked me in the eye. That's important. So, Mr. Andre, what jewels are you going to drop on me tonight? Why should I pay attention to what you have to say? What qualifies you to have my undivided attention? Well, as you've heard, I work here. I've been working here for 20 years. I came straight out of high school and I started as an undergraduate here. I graduated from here. A couple of years later, I became an employee here. I must really love Southern Miss. <laughs> to the top. What do I do here? I had someone ask me, Mr. Heath, what do you do here at Southern Miss? And my answer was simple. I help students get what they want. What do students want? A lot. <laughs> one, one person said scholarships. <laughs> I want opportunity. I want to be successful. Well, I help students get all of that. And I have been for a long time, and I'm getting pretty good at it. And I like what I do. I love what I do. It's not really a job. I, I get to go to work. I don't have to go to work. There's a difference. Wouldn't you want a job where you get to go to work, where it's enjoyable, where you want to be there? This is where I am. I want to be here because I know I have a purpose in life, and that's to instill value in others, to serve others, and especially young people. 
Now, I know some of the things I'm going to say for some of you is going to go in one ear and out the other. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to you. You haven't stopped looking at me all night. I love it. I'm talking to you. You haven't stopped looking at me since I started. You're paying attention. And for some of you, you're back here laughing. And that's OK. Because my message is not meant for everybody. See, many are called, but few are chosen. What I'm about to tell you, you will get by the end of the night that when you do today what most people won't, you can have tomorrow what most people can't. See, most people don't pay attention in class, but you do. Most people don't read books, but you do. Most people don't take advantage of certain opportunities. They're a little hard to, to get, but you do. And then when the day comes, when you have what most people don't have, they're going to ask you a question. Why do you have that? How did you get that? I was willing to do what you weren't willing to do. When you do what most people won't, most people, think about the things most people won't do. Oh, that's too hard. I'm not studying that long. I'm not going to bed that early. I'm not getting up that early. I'm not working out that hard. I'm not eating that healthy. Well, you won't have the benefit of the discipline it takes to get what most people don't have. And that's the first term I want to share with you, is discipline. What's discipline? Y'all are learning discipline, I'm sure. <laughs> what is discipline? Someone give me a definition of discipline, young man. The strength to do things without someone having to tell you to do it. And your name is Tony, is that right? Yes, sir. Tony says it's the strength to do something without being told. It's also called initiative, right? Doing something that you need to do without having to be told to do it. How many of you think you have that initiative? I have to be told to do something sometimes. Some people have it, some people don't. But I recognize it when you do have it. See, I don't have to tell you to pick that piece of paper up off the ground. You know it's important for that to be off the ground. I don't have to tell you to open the door. You know it's important to open the door. I don't have to tell you to study. You know it's important to study. Most people don't do that. See, discipline is doing the difficult. What's well, not easy. See, I know the human body, the human condition, we want things to be smooth. We don't want pain. We want it to be easy. That's just the natural order of things. We don't want pain. We don't want it to hurt. But I've been told, and I've heard, and I've learned, no pain, no gain. <laughs> no pain, no gain. You have to go through something. You have to endure, you have to persevere for the promise of the payoff. Most people don't want to do that. That's too hard. See, in life, if you want to be successful, you've got to have discipline. You've got to do what you need to do when you need to do it, whether you like it or not. And I'm telling you, at 44 years old, it doesn't get any easier doing what's necessary even when it hurts. A question was posed to you earlier, that when you feel down and you feel a little distraught and you second guess yourself and you're wondering you know, why and how and what, how do you get out of that? What do you tell yourself? Someone share with me what you tell yourself to get out of that slump. It's not always going to be like this. Alfred said it won't last always. What about you? 
Every bad day can turn into a good one. When motivational wor words don't work, you do something else. I think the young lady said she works out. She runs to get her mind off thing, right? In the back. Your hardest trial can be your greatest lesson. Well, I want to give a hand clap for that one. <laughs> young lady. I've heard that from E.T. the hip hop preacher. That's all right. God has a plan for everything. If it's not working out, what was the last part? Then that's his plan. Pure power, love, and a sound mind. Second Timothy, first chapter, seventh verse. I'm getting more and more impressed with this young man. I'm going to have to meet you after it's over, man. Not many people know that verse. God hadn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. In some versions, it says self-discipline. I like what you, so you already understand what I'm telling you. That you're going to have to go through some tough times. You can anticipate adversity. I, I, I think I need to tell you that. You need to expect for things not to always go your way. But what are you going to do about it? See, it's not what happens to you. It's how you respond what happens to what happens to you that's more important. Things are going to happen to you. You're going to lock yourself out of your car one day. <laughs> That ever happened to you? <laughs> You're going to lose your keys one day. I've lost my cell phone before. That hurts. <laughs> I've lost my license before. That hurts. Right? I've stubbed my toe on the edge of the bed at night. Yeah, that, that. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> So you can expect pain in life. You can expect adversity. But the key is how you respond. Someone said earlier during the session in the auditorium about failure, how to look at failure. I'm still on discipline now. But there was a book that was suggested about failure. And I, I'm not familiar with that book, but there's a book by Dr. John C. Maxwell, and it's called Failing Forward. Failing forward, failing forward. That, think about failing, but you're failing forward. So the idea is that, yes, I've made a mistake. Yes, I've missed the mark, but I'm going to learn from that mistake. So I'm going to fail forward, not backwards. I'm going to learn the lesson from that failure so that I don't have to repeat that, that mistake. And it takes discipline for you to understand that it's not always going to go my way. I can anticipate adversity. Things are not always going to be easy. But when I apply myself, when the times are tough, I'm going to make it through eventually. The next thing, young men and women, you're going to need <laughs> is integrity. Have you ever heard of that word? What's that mean? Doing the right thing when no one else is looking. See, it's easy to do it when the cameras are on you, right? And in today's society, there's a camera almost everywhere, right? Whether it's in the ceiling or in your pocket, someone has something that you, you can record your actions with. But what about when no one's looking? What about when no one would know? That's integrity. And integrity is a test of your what? character, who you really are when nobody's looking. See, in your circles of influence, people are always testing your character. Girl, I wouldn't let him do that to me. <laughs> they said, what? Oh, no, they did. <laughs> yeah, they must want to fight. 
right? There are going to be so many circumstances where your character is going to be tested and integrity was going to keep you secure. Now, Mr. Heath, how can you teach us and talk to us about integrity? I know you're not perfect. I never said I was. Is anyone perfect? No. Do you know anybody perfect? No. I know one person, and he's not in here right now. <laughs> he's everywhere to me. I'm telling you right now that the test of your character is going to come. What happens when you see a wallet on the ground and you know whose it is? Oh, it's easy to say that now because everybody's watching. Everybody's saying, what did he say? But what about when it's on the ground, the person didn't know he lost it, you see it, pick it up. What do you do? Have you ever heard of this? Have you ever heard of, 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 of karma? You very familiar with that? Like, have you ever done something you shouldn't have done and then some kind of way it comes back around to you ten times worse? <laughs> like, we said, talk about it. Wow. Mr. Heath had his character tested. I'll give you one example among hundreds. I was parking one day in the parking lot here at USM. I was in a rush to get to work. And I pulled into the slot. And as I pulled into the slot, I barely skidded the car next to mine. Now, a person of integrity would what? Write a little note and say, hey, I'm sorry I bumped your vehicle. <sighs> it's my fault. I, I have insurance. Let's square it away when you get this note, right? Well, I was in such a rush. I said, ah, you know, it's already dinged up anyway. They'll never notice, <laughs> right? That's me rationalizing wrong. Have you ever rationalized wrong? <laughs> I, I appreciate your transparency tonight. <laughs> Like, I, I just didn't want to do the right thing because no one was watching and I didn't want to suffer the consequences of it, so I thought I'd get away with it. But there's a Bible verse that says, you reap what you sow. So guess what happened? <laughs> I'm in the drive-thru with Cane's. Who likes Cane's, right? All right, we talked about eating healthy. I'm not eating healthy this day. I'm in the drive-thru at Cane's, minding my own business. I've just ordered my meal. I'm getting ready to pull into the, the drive-thru to pay to my meal. And I look in my rearview mirror, and there's these three girls in their car laughing. They're not paying attention. And boom, they bump me, right? I get out of the truck. I'm looking at the back of my vehicle. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I sound like Kevin Hart. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I wasn't ready. <laughs> I wasn't ready. And their paint was on my paint, but there was no dent, right? And they were afraid. I stepped out in a suit. I looked like I had some level of authority. I'm like, oh, we're sorry, we're sorry, you're sorry. And I said, you know what, don't, don't worry about it. And in my mind, I'm like, karma. karma. <laughs> I was owed that one, right? Karma wasn't done with me. <laughs> Karma wasn't finished. How come in, within a week, I had two more incidents when my truck was, was injured? Right? Right now, the truck is in the shop. <laughs> it's been there a week. Right? I got a bill just about this long waiting on me. And I'm thinking, just for a little scratch? Man, I just, I'm paying all this. But that's a lesson I learned. The ripple effect of wrong. You hear what I said? You know what a ripple effect is? You ever throw something in the pond and it, it ripples? That's what happened to me. On that one little thing, 
an innocent accident that I didn't show character and integrity about, and I'm reaping what I've sown. I know some of you can attest to that. So why not do the right thing anyway? Why not do the right thing when no one is watching? Save yourself some pain. Save yourself some headache and heartache by doing the right thing, whether no one's watching or not. Discipline. Integrity. Respect is next. What's respect? Who said that? Right there. Say, say it louder. Respect, treating others as you would like to be treated. Doing uh, unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? Doing unto others as you would have them doing unto you. So if you want to respect someone, you, you're going to treat them the way you want to be treated, right? But the key is, how do you want to be treated? Do you respect yourself? If I don't respect myself, do you think I'm going to respect you? It first begins with yourself. So how can you show respect for yourself? Taking care of yourself. How? Taking care of yourself in what ways? Mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Doing things that cause you to be healthy and happy. What about the company you keep? Could you respect yourself about the people you choose to hang around? Have you ever heard of this adage, birds of a feather? Flock together. Do, do you believe that? No. Somebody said no. You don't believe that? You just say that? Oh, you didn't say that. I noticed in my own life that when I hung out with knuckleheads, I turned into a knucklehead. And I'm not naturally a knucklehead. I, coming from Crystal Springs, my little hometown, I went to church every Sunday. I was yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, please, may I, thank you. I was doing all the nice things because I was trained up in the way I should go, right? right? And so when I came to college, I started hanging with these guys who, they, they were able to stay out past midnight. They did drugs and drank alcohol. They didn't go to class. But I wanted them to be my friend. And so in order to be accepted, I had to, act like them. That group of birds, I had to lower my standards to be accepted by them. And then slowly, I became one of those birds. I got in trouble. I got this close to getting kicked out of college. This close to getting kicked out of school where my mama sent me to get an education and to make myself out of, make something out of myself. I'm here playing around, being a clown, they're about to kick me out. The dean of students moved all of us. He separated all of the knuckleheads, put us in different dorms. I landed in a dorm, one of the high-end dorms where the scholars stayed. I met a group of men there were in a fraternity, and they wore bow ties, and they looked nice, and they were student leaders on campus, and I wanted to be like them. I don't know if you know anything about fraternities, but it was Kappa Alpha Psi. And so I said, you know what? I want to be a Kappa because Kappas are cool and they twirl canes. I like that. I want to be like that. And so I started to hang around Kappas. Guess what? Grades started going up. Morals and values increased. I started to make something of myself. I had hope that things would be better because my GPA was better. I felt better about myself. I respected myself enough. I became a Kappa, and with that influence, I was able to help other students because I was in a different group of birds. I'm a golden eagle. I'm an eagle. And eagles soar, right? Eagles fly high. 
to begin with, I was hanging with chickens. <laughs> I was hanging with pigeons. <laughs> you know what they do, right? <laughs> yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't do what the, what the eagles do. When I found myself with the eagles, I started to soar. And I want you to understand the message and the importance of hanging around the right people. Because at your age, you are very impressionable. You want to be accepted. And sometimes you will accept less of yourself just to be accepted. You would do things out of your character so people will like you. With social media especially, you find yourself doing things that can cause irreparable damage. You put yourself in very precarious positions. Don't find yourself doing that. Hang with the right people. Discipline. What's next? Integrity. Respect. And this last one. And I'm going to leave you with this one. I'm sweating. <laughs> Determination. You got to be determined. You got to want it. You got to want it bad. You got to want it so bad, you got to want it like you want to breathe. See, every day I get up, I have to want what I say I want bad, badly. See, a lot of people want to be successful, kind of. <laughs> I, I kind of want to be successful. I, I, I really want to have the job. I want that nice house. I want that nice car. If it comes uh, easier than I expect. You got to have drive. Go get it. Grind, hustle, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Rick Ross says, every day I'm hustling. Every day he hustling. I'm hustling every day. In my own way, I'm out to go get it because you know what? It's not going to be given to me. See, nobody owes me anything. Nobody owes me anything. I have to go work for it. See, that's why I get so upset when I see people on the news and they've broken into someone's home, they've stolen someone's money, or whether it's a corporate crime, you know, they've embezzled some money. They weren't willing to work for it. They wanted to steal it. They didn't want to earn it. Back in my day in the 80s, there was this commercial, and it was this older guy. He said, at E.F. Hutton, we do things the old-fashioned way. We earn it. See, that's not today's society. You want to microwave success. Instant. It doesn't happen that way. Some of you want these degrees, and you want these jobs that take years to attain. You asked one lady, you know, when did you graduate high school? She said 2002. Man, you graduated and you were 16? And you had a 1.3 GPA, but now you have a PhD? Y'all remember who that was? Yeah. The pretty lady? <laughs> Dr. Juan said, I started here, but I ended here but it took determination. Don't think that everybody on that panel got where they got easily. Don't think that everybody on that panel just say, hey, look at me now, you know. It took determination. Tony, it's gonna take determination. It's gonna be hard. But you owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself to go get what you say you want. You can do it, and I need you to survive. I need you to be successful. This country needs you to be all you can be. I'm serious. That's why I was so excited to talk to you today. I wanted to share some principles with you. The few jewels that you can put in your pocket and say, if I just keep these four jewels, I have a chance of being successful. It's competitive out here, y'all. A lot of people say they want the same thing you say you want. Y'all know about competition, right? Anybody play sports? You know, 
I was in the band. <laughs> I played baritone. <laughs> I was a nerd. <laughs> I was a geek. I was square, as they used to say back in the day. Even in that, it was competitive. I was first chair baritone. I played solo on the field. Because I had determination on the baritone. To, to this day, my band director and I stay in touch, and I tell him how much of an impression, a positive influence he was in my life because he instilled some characteristics in me that to this day I still live with. ROTC is a special program. I hope you understand the significance of it and what these people and, and men and women in, in military uniforms are trying to teach you and trying to show you. I hope you're accepting this, this instruction. I hope you're open to their instruction because they only want the best for you. For those of you that heard me speak in Jackson, I came with my son. My son is now 22. He graduates from MSU at the end of this year. And he is in ROTC. He started in high school and he became one of the best cadets they have. Now he's at Mississippi State and he's doing so well. And guess what he wants to go into? Cybersecurity. I told him about my speaking engagement here. I told him what it was all about. I said, man, what a coincidence. I'm speaking to ROTC cadets at a cybersecurity conference, and my son is in the same boat. I had to teach my son some of the same principles I'm trying to tell you tonight, and he's going to be successful. He's, just, he's, he's, been, uh, he's active duty now. He's just waiting on his orders, so when he graduates, he knows where he's going. But I have every confidence he's going to be okay. You heard me tell you some things tonight, and I hope you heard them. I hope you took some mental notes. When you do today what most people won't, have discipline, integrity, respect, and determination. Most people don't have those. But when you do, you can have tomorrow what most people can't. Now go get it.